Hey everyone, excited to be back for this week's edition of Frequently Asked Questions for Commercial Real Estate. In today's video, what I want to do is talk about ways to be able to profit off commercial real estate. So really, it's going to be identifying value add opportunities and how do you capitalize on them. And this is going to be something that, you know, obviously this is near the end of the year. And so hopefully you can apply some of these principles going forward into 2024 and beyond to better serve your clients. And, and even better, if you can capitalize on some of these opportunities yourself and become an owner of commercial real estate, uh, that could also be beneficial as well. So we'll talk about some of the strategies that you can employ. Uh, but before we dive in this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to this channel. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So now you've done that, go and like and subscribe below. Let's go ahead and dive around this episode. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, four key things that you can look for as far as value add opportunities in commercial real estate. Now, there's there's obviously many, many more ways that you can profit from commercial real estate. So I don't claim this to be a comprehensive video, but uh, these are four key strategies that I've employed in my own business and we're actually utilizing uh, to acquire property as well. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to highlight those uh, opportunities or th those strategies, I should say. So to start off, number one uh, is to identify the path of progress. So what is the path of progress? Path of progress is a trend of redevelopment or development in a city, town, municipality. So you probably have many paths of progress or some paths of progress in the cities that you live in. Maybe there's an area that used to be blighted, wasn't you know the greatest area, or maybe the buildings were all run down, and now you're starting to see developers come in and start to redevelop these buildings, make them look nice, brand new and shiny. Sometimes they'll knock down the building completely and then build the ground up. Uh, those are areas that are probably worthwhile to look into as far as potential opportunities. This is because property values in those areas tend to, tend to rise relatively quickly compared to other parts of the city. Uh, this is because there's a lot more investment coming in that area. Therefore, neighboring properties that maybe are blighted or maybe aren't quite where they need to be could potentially become much more valuable as you let time progress and more and more dollars come in. And so oftentimes what I'll do is try to get, get an understanding of the areas of town where I'm seeing investment dollars going. I'm talking to developers. I'm talking to uh, people who are just transacting regularly in the marketplace. And you can kind of get an understanding of areas of town where the path of progress exists or the future potential for that exists based on a variety of different factors. And so that's number one is to, to determine areas in your market where that progress is, is taking place. And if it hasn't yet taken place, you try to get ahead of it uh, at least a little bit. Uh, you know, you can speculate, but I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't love to speculate. I think it's a very risky play, but if you have the money to be able to do so, that's great. But as, if you do see dollars moving into an area and they're moving at a relatively rapid pace and you start seeing the, the bigger players or the players that are regularly transacting the market starting to invest pretty de decent dollars in the area, probably a good indication that you should start looking in that area as well. So that's number one is to look for the path of progress. Number two is to identify opportunities to raise rents or to modify expenses within leases. So uh, I work a lot in the retail space. So this applies most, most regularly to retail, office, industrial. Uh, multifamily is a little bit more uh, difficult to manage on this outside of just raising rent. But, you know, as far as the leases are concerned, if you, if you identify a uh, retail strip center, for example, and you start looking at the leases and you realize that the leases are gross leases, meaning that the, the landlord is responsible for paying all operating expenses, including taxes, insurance. You know, sometimes they'll even throw in water and electric in there. I've seen leases like that. Typically in most markets, and I can't comment on your market per se, but I will say that in most markets, retail leases are typically triple net. Triple net leases, as we've discussed in previous videos, are where the tenant takes their pro rata share responsibility of the taxes, insurance, and general maintenance for the property, along with all their other operating expenses. And so if you see that issue as far as the lease is concerned, because the way it's structured, there could be potential opportunity to come in and say, okay, let's run out these leases. And at the point where they renew, then you can bring them to a triple net lease, or maybe you bring them closer to market rate, or you know maybe there exists another dynamic where you know, the tenant is not paying for taxes or insurance, or maybe they're paying just for one versus the other. That's a value add opportunity to say, okay, well, now I got to pass that expense on to the tenant because as far as the market is concerned, that is the that is the standard for the market. So again, these are some value add opportunities. That's why with retail, it's so important to read the leases carefully, understand exactly what you're doing and getting into, because those are going to dictate what type of opportunities you can force or value you can force within a, a building. So that's number two is to review the leases and try to find creative ways to be able to add 
uh, revenue or, or, or either revenue or any or reduce expenses to, to bring more dollars to the bottom line. Because as we know, commercial real estate is valued based on the income it produces for the investor. All right, so that's number two. Number three is one that I've utilized quite heavily in my practice, and we're actually starting to utilize it in some of the acquisitions we're, we're, we're looking to make, is zoning. Now, zoning is, is our laws in cities and municipalities that dictate what type of business uses can operate on site. So if you are operating in a residentially zoned neighborhood, you usually cannot operate a business on site. So the the value add plays what, what that I'm that I'm typically seeing is that you take a property that maybe isn't zoned for its highest and best use and then rezone it to something else. Now, rezoning is not a foregone conclusion. You know, it, it does require approval from usually the city level uh, to be able to get the rezoning done. But if you understand the, the the makeup of the area and you understand the potential of something to be able to get rezoned, there could be value add there. Right now we're looking at a, a building where we have under contract that is zoned office residential. It's in a in a burgeoning commercial corridor. A lot of the properties surrounding it are commercially zoned and we're in the process right now of re re rezoning it to a higher commercial use. Because of that corridor is very unique and we start we, we, we've seen other cases where people have been able to rezone those buildings in that corridor to commercial uses, we feel pretty confident about our ability to do so. Now, obviously, there is a, a, a grain where that could not happen, but there's a, there's a precedent already been set as far as the area itself. So, you know, these types of this type of information, this type of strategy can be very, very valuable because if you open up the potential for a broader range of business uses, now you open up the floodgates as far as the the potential users that could potentially occupy the space, and some users can pay a significant amount of money if it's in the right area. So these are also value add opportunities to, is to understand your zoning laws and to look at areas of town where these potential opportunities exist to rezone the property, because sometimes sellers are hard pressed to, to sell. They want to sell at a certain price, but you could say something along the lines of, OK, well, you know, if you really want that price, it's, it's not worth it as it currently stands. But if you're willing to give me whatever it takes to rezone, then maybe at that time it's worth it because maybe the property pro value significantly increases if you're able to achieve the zoning that you need. So that's number three is to look at the zoning for the area, get an understanding of the zoning laws, and then capitalize on opportunities that maybe aren't zoned properly right now, but could be could be rezoned in the future. And then finally, number four is one that, that does take a good amount of capital to do, but it, it, it can be very well worth it is partitioning or subdividing land. Uh, you know, I know some some players in town that what they do is they buy large swaths of land. Uh, you know, a lot of times they either have sewers or sometimes they don't have sewers and, and other other uh, utilities that are going to the site. And then they prep the land. So they'll take the 30 acres or whatever, run the sewers, run the utilities, do whatever they need to do. And then they'll subdivide the lots in acre lots or whatever. And then they'll sell those lots to residential developers, to individuals who want to construct their own property. And they can create a significant delta profit from that. We have another client uh, in, uh, you know, in a submarket here in Mount Washington that did just that. He had 10 or 12 acres of land, commercially zoned land uh, in, in, a, in a particularly burgeoning submarket. And he partitioned off these different pieces and was able to sell these, these, these acre to two acre pieces to a commercial use for a lot higher than what he would have if he wanted to sell the, the entire 12 acres of land. So again, that's a value add opportunity as well, because you're prepping the site for someone to be able to come in and develop it and not have to worry about all the site work and all the different headaches that come with permitting and everything else. So if you're willing to take on that responsibility on the front end, it can be a very lucrative uh, endeavor for you. Now, it will take some time to get those sold. So it, it usually would take, you know, just to be asked, just to be safe, anywhere between a year to two years, as far as a hold period is concerned, maybe even more depending on the area. Uh, so you really have to be able to have some staying power. Uh, when it comes to that strategy. Another strategy that is kind of a bonus strategy related to land is if you buy a strip center and then there's pieces of land out front, uh, you know, called outlots or not, not necessarily outlots, but if you have pieces of land up above uh, abutting the road and you can partition those off into outlots, those can also be very su uh, successful. Outlots being an acre of land that maybe a, a fast casual restaurant wants or a car wash or some other user that could benefit from having a drive through or a, a high visibility that could also be a very lucrative opportunity where you can recoup some of the money you have invested in these these strip center opportunities or some other you know highly visible uh, commercial property opportunities. So, 
Hopefully you gain some value from this video. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive list, but these are some good starting points as far as being able to generate profit from commercial real estate. If you guys like this channel, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge impact on our ability to reach a broader audience. Along with that, if you guys are looking for these types of opportunities in the Louisville metro surrounding areas, I'm a commercial real estate agent in town. I'd love to be able to help you with this opportunity. Feel free to give me a call at 502-536-7315, or you can reach me via email at rafaelacrasantigroup.com. Thanks again so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.